the accelerator, right, becomes the context for activating the fifth key, right, which is, right, activating community, but in a whole new way. Exactly. It, it, it absolutely does, because the community is an evolutionary community. Right. So when you gather together with other people who are turned on from within, who are yearning to give their gift, who have unique things to give, and who are coming out of love rather than out of competition, who are coming with the realization we need each other to fulfill any of our destinies. We can have an evolutionary community, Mark, that I really feel you have achieved the best I've ever seen it at the Center for Integral Wisdom. Thank you, Lou. You really have, and you have maybe 50 brilliant people there, and all of them are yearning to express their creativity, and it's turned into a symphony. It's turned into everyone giving their gift, and the extraordinary capacity of that happening is so remarkable that I feel in our accelerator that by inviting all the students to come in and help create that map, then they can also go back to their communities to create those maps in person. And then we could be seeding the entire culture. And it isn't grandiose to say that. You know why? Because nothing else really does it well. It's like there's a vacuum of social initiatives. There are many wonderful projects. But unless you synergize that which is creative and you need community to do that, we cannot do it without community. And in community, uh, I would say we develop the resonance, we develop the practices, we develop the love of each other, and we, we orchestrate ourselves into the next stage of evolution collectively. So I pass this to you, Mark. Yeah, it's gorgeous, Rita. I mean, that's, that's completely gorgeous. And, and that distinction you drew, beloved Barbara, right, between evolutionary community and ordinary community, let me perhaps pick up from there. I mean, that's so wildly important. Right? And it's, I, it could be I'm part of community, and I'm part of a great community. I, I want to really kind of just say that importantly. I'm, I'm, this, I'm with this wonderful community. But it's not evolutionary community. When Thierry de Chardin, right, who had such an impact on both of us, love, right, when he talked about, you know, the, the impact, the, the stunning and, 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 you know, impact of yearning, right, and then finding people who are infused with the same evolutionary ethos, the same evolutionary values, coming together to form evolutionary community. He talked about that as an almost inconsolable longing and the pleasure that you feel in that and what we're calling the activation that you feel in that because actually none of the first four keys actually operate independently of the fifth key. The fifth key is like, it's like the blood, right? You've got all the organs, you got like the other four keys are organs in the body, but the blood, right, is the community. And, and we generally have two types of community. We'll have either a community built around, you know, a kind of charismatic teacher or teachers, right, which is beautiful, right, and gorgeous, and that has value, right, but we're moving beyond that kind of community. We're moving towards a community where it's not a Buddha at the center, there's a Sangha, right, there's a community, and the community itself, right, is self-organizing and self-generating. But then that kind of community actually has its own shadow, which is it's egalitarian, there's no natural hierarchies of excellence. There's no hierarchies of uniqueness. So for example, I'll give you one example that I grew up with, Barbara, the kibbutz in Israel that emerged out of socialism, right, was all about, doesn't matter who you are, everyone does the exact same thing. Well, that's lovely, and that's why the kibbutz movement collapsed, right, because yeah. people felt this violation, right, of unique self. So we're talking about a new vision of community, an evolutionary community, but not just an evolutionary community in the, the, the sense that, Barbara, you were talking about when you did Agents for Conscious Evolution, because now we've merged memes. So actually, we've taken this momentous leap in community. We're talking about what we're now calling, it's a name that I gave to it six years ago, Unique Self Symphony. Yeah. Unique Self Symphony. And when Lisa first started studying with me, and we talked, our, our first conversation was around unique self and unique self symphonies. Right, now, as Unique Self Symphonies get invested and merged with, right, right, your gorgeous memes of the Telerotic universe and, and it's, you know, all the gorgeous things that comes together, literally, we've actually seen the emergence of a new form of community, which is a new form of evolution. So stay with me, friends, because evolution is, right, the evolution of intimacy. It's the evolution of relationships. So what evolution is always doing is yielding new configurations of intimacy. 
So the move from a single cell to multicellular at the beginning of the biosphere, that's a new form of intimacy. That new form of intimacy ultimately produces the human being. So now we're at a new place where there's a new form of intimacy operating at the cultural level, which we're calling unique self-symphony. And unique self-symphony, actually at the Center for Integral Wisdom, which Barbara, you co-chair so beautifully, right? You know, you got the, the wand, you know, the, the baton passed from a, a fabulous previous chair and, and what a, a gorgeous group of people and Lisa, right? Who's kind of a central board member, right? At the center and, and now the foundation for conscious evolution and the center are now symphonizing together. So the word that we all use together is Barbara and I use, we call each other and Lisa calls and we call Lee Ray are we symphonizing? So that means that, wow, I don't just write an email myself, right? I write an email, but then I want to symphonize with Barbara, right? How, how are we going to add to it? And it's egoless. It, when you're actually infused by evolutionary values, it's not like, oh, really, I got a check to send out an email? No, that's ego level. No, actually, how do we symphonize? How do we create music in which we're each playing our own instrument, right? That's activating the new identity. We're part of the general score of reality, right? That's evolution. You know, we're, we're activating our new vision of reality. We're in the same symphony together. We, we got the same notes to the same symphony, right? But then we're practicing because we've all practiced our instrument. We've brought perfection to our instrument, but we have a map, right? The fourth key, which is we see all the other instruments, but now watch. But then it becomes a jazz symphony. Not just a symphony where we're playing old notes. We're playing a unique version of even Beethoven. But actually, when we come together as unique selves, we actually synergize and we create right, new realities that are ontologically orthogonal to anything that came before, which is just a fancy way. I just wanted to say those two words this entire, just now I'm happy, right? <laughs> meaning ontologically orthogonal, it's our friend Daniel loves saying those words, meaning it's, it's, it's different than anything that came before it because we're doing unique self jazz symphony, meaning we're creating new music that was never created before. Now here's the deal. That's not just fun, that actually heals suffering. Because the only way we're going to heal suffering on the planet, right, the only way we're going to close the gap between our ability to feel the pain and our ability to heal the pain, which is the fifth source of depression, right? There's a gap, right? We, can, we know more about suffering right, than anyone did in history. Only God knew, right, as much as we know today. And yet, so we can, we can feel all the pain, we can't heal it. In that gap, right, mental illness. In that gap, depression. In that gap, anxiety. We can only close the gap by realizing, oh, I don't have to heal the whole thing. I can give my unique gift, but not by ignoring everything else, as part of a unique self-symphony, which will synergize jazz symphony and create new possibilities that never could have existed before. So what we want to do together, right, in this coming year, is actually model together to become a unique self-symphony. Wow. And that's like, it's just kind of shocking, right? It's kind of shocking. And then that unique self-symphony where we actually know, right? Let's say, you know, everyone in the accelerator, we all know each other. We know each other by first names. We spend a weekend together, right? Everyone knows each other's life goals and projects. It's intimate and personal and yet planetary. So, wow. Wow. Five keys. You know, Mark, I, I want to just add to that marvelous possibility for us yes. within our own communities and smaller communities. But here's a goal for human evolution, which is a planetary awakening through a unique self-symphony. And for, for many years in the story of evolution, I've always seen our crisis is a birth. Yes. A next stage of human evolution. So let's just have a last vision here is that as we learn to practice this, we have a planetary goal. And the planetary goal is to create the circumstances in which as many human beings as possible can enter into a time of a, of a unique self-symphony on a planetary scale. With the internet turned on for everybody to place their gift into the internet, which is what Teilhard de Chardin said, would be in his language the christification of the earth and we're saying planetary awakening in love so this is a very unusual offering that we have is oh as we practice this ourselves what happens is we're possibly leading up to a planetary experience that could actually change consciousness on earth Yes. I mean, yes. And just notice everyone, Barbara and I like to finish each other's sentences. We've, we've tried to be disciplined in this. We just gave a keynote in um, California a week ago. We just had a delight of just finishing each other's sentences because that's what you get to do as evolutionaries. So I'm going to just, as you finish my sentence, I'm going to finish your sentence. We're going to pass to Lisa, which is, and here we go. Okay. It's a planetary awakening in love through unique self-symphonies. 
And we'll, we'll just we'll let a little secret out of the bag here. The book that Barbara and I are working on right now is that book. But by reading the book, you can't quite get it. It's, it'll take us, you know, that's where we're putting a lot of energy. But to get to actually infuse this with life, we actually have to do it together. We've got to be it together. We have to experience it together. So these are the five keys that lead towards beloved be as as you say in our shared meme right a planetary pentecost which we're now calling the planetary awakening in love what kind of love evolutionary love through what's the methodology unique selves playing in the unique self symphony it is the singularly most hopeful and only social vision that i know of right that barbara and i know of that barbara lisa and i know of that we know of at the center and the foundation that can actually be the change right the change is everything